This is a training video for anaesthetists interested in using the isolated forearm technique. You will need the following equipment. A pneumatic cuff, in addition to the standard blood pressure cuff for monitoring intraoperative BP, with a manual inflation bulb and manometer gauge to indicate cuff pressure. Strong surgical forceps or a clamp to occlude the tubes to the cuff. An orthopaedic pad such as velband or soft band or cotton wool padding to be placed under the IFT pneumatic cuff to protect the forearm from bruising. A nerve stimulator and electrodes to check for the integrity of the ulnar and median nerves following vascular occlusion by the pneumatic cuff. A digital recorder with closed headphones in order to present to the patient the command to open and close the fingers of the isolated arm. You will need to have prepared the command, name of patient, if you can hear my voice, open and close the fingers of your right or left hand. This should be set to repeat every minute. It is wise to mention to the patient prior to anaesthesia that you intend to use the isolated forearm technique and provide a plain English explanation of what is involved. This should be presented as reassurance to the patient in the context of the, albeit small, risk of awareness and the reliability of the IFT to detect consciousness should it occur. Prior to induction, the nerve stimulator electrode should be placed first in the antecubital fossa and secondly dorsally on the elbow close to the olecranon process. The pad should then be placed round the forearm and then the IFT pneumatic cuff immediately on top. The nerve stimulator electrodes are then connected to the stimulator. A non-elastic restraining bandage is applied to the patient's isolated hand to prevent gross movement that might interfere with surgery. Induction can now take place. Neuromuscular integrity now needs to be checked with a supramax stimulus and to ensure electrode contact. The cuff is inflated to around 200 millimetres of mercury and the cuff occluded with a surgical clamp. A timer is commenced to indicate the duration of forearm occlusion. The patient is now intubated and maintenance anaesthesia commenced. One can, of course, talk directly to the patient at any time before the headphones are placed. There may be strong reflex movements of the hand and forearm at this point. If this occurs, it should be checked that the patient isn't conscious and reacting to intubation by asking the patient to squeeze their hand in response to command rather than as a spontaneous reflex, as in the unconscious patient. If necessary, Give more induction agent, but do not release the pneumatic tourniquet. The headphones are placed over the patient's ears and the Walkman recording of patient commands is initiated. The muscle relaxant is then administered and surgery commences. At this point, the integrity of the ulna and median nerves is checked using train of four stimulation. Nerve integrity is checked regularly while the cuff is inflated, for example every five minutes with a train of four stimulus or a short tetanic burst. After 30 minutes the tourniquet is released 
and the integrity of the ulnar and median nerves is again checked using train of force stimulation. The tourniquet can be maintained for up to 30 minutes and then deflated until further muscle relaxant is required. Once again, the integrity of the ulna and median nerves is checked with the nerve stimulator and a further 30 minute period of forearm occlusion begins. This cycle may be repeated for as long as surgery continues. If surgical circumstances make access to either arm problematic, consider using a leg and foot instead. What should you do if there is intraoperative movement of the hand? The simple answer is increase the anaesthetic dose, but it is helpful to get some idea of the patient's condition, as is illustrated in the following example. Open your fingers with your left hand. Just let them close up again. If you're feeling comfortable, Eve, open your fingers again. And close them again. Now this time, if you are in pain, if you have pain, only if you have pain, open your fingers. That's very good, Eve. Okay, can you just open your fingers again now? Just open your fingers now. And close them again. That's good. We hope this video will encourage you to use the isolated forearm technique routinely and especially when risk of awareness is high as defined in NICE guidelines and NAP5 recommendations.